and this is another edition of Classic Movie Show with Dr. Thomas Edward Make, PhD in Actorology, who's going to talk about either the greatest actor, the greatest movie, or just riff on something cinematic. Take it away, Dr. Tom. Uh, you know, who is the best, the best actor ever? I mean, it, it, it's hard to say because it depends what... There's, di there's different criteria that are involved here. Um, um, I mean, the, on, the, on the different genres, on uh, the different approaches, the different theories uh, of acting. I mean, it, once you, when you add up everything, I guess it would have to be Spencer Tracy. I don't know. Um, just because he was the model remains the model of of uh, the simple moment, you know, uh, that um, I think people use him, maybe even to this day actors use him, I hope they do, uh, as an influence, because he just, uh, he, it was the essence of simplicity, you know, and when you say that, of course, it's not simple at all. It's it's very complicated, but he made it look simple, and that's the thing about that's that's the essence of of, of great acting. I think. I mean, there are other obviously other kinds of great acting. There's there's Charlie Chaplin. There's Lawrence Olivier. There's you know Betty Davis. Uh, uh, but nobody had quite had what he had, and. It's what you, you know, there are actors today probably that you can say that about, uh, where, that you can't really find them acting. I mean, you can, you can, obviously, if you have a trained eye especially, but uh, it's not, it, it has nothing to do with big emotions or uh, uh, gimmicks, uh, external external help of any kind it's all internal it's uh, uh, maybe what some people would call the internal dialogue it's not in the in the script but you think of something to change your facial expression or your vocal inflection or whatever uh, even your your gestures um, and there's just nobody I, to this day. I can't think of anybody who who had that, who quite like him. It's what you look for. And I mean, there are other actors uh, from his time that that were that were uh, similar in that way. Frederick March was one. Um, uh, Claire Trevor was one. Um, Van Heflin, I, I think, is was was an amazing actor who unfortunately never went as far as as he should have. Um, even though he did win the Academy Award, he still uh, it's not somebody that you associate with like legendariness, uh, like Tracy or Olivier or Bogart or somebody like that. Uh, but certainly one of my favorites, and everybody should. Uh, should see as much Van Heflin as they can. I guess his most famous movie is Shane. He wasn't Shane. Alan Ladd was Shane. He was the homesteader uh, who uh, built up a friendship with Shane, and uh, it was masterful, simple acting. Uh... Uh, who else was was really great? I mean, Montgomery Clift was was just super. He had something. He really he preceded um, Brando. I mean, Brando's usually the one that stands out among that generation. But but Clift came first, and it was it was a very similar style. There was you saw more often with no dialogue at all. You saw what was going on. You felt what he felt. You sensed, more than sensed, you knew. You knew what what he was thinking without 
his expression of it in a, a place in the sun for example i mean it was a, a probably an unsympathetic role as written but he was so damn sympathetic i mean you you were dared to sympathize with this guy uh who he was who was a social climber and uh, maybe a murderer who knows um it may have been an accident, it may have not been, but it, only a great actor could have made you uh, not only wonder whether he was guilty or not, but have sympathy either way, because he was that sympathetic and that wise. He was a wise fucking actor. Um, before him, there was, there was John Garfield who had that same kind of thing. For, unfortunately for John Garfield, uh, he was under contract to Warner Brothers for many years. They just did not use him properly. They put him in too much crap. Uh, occasionally he would get a good chance, and those are the movies that that hold up. Fortunately, there were enough of them to hold up in a in a short life. He he died tragically at 39 of a heart attack. Ruined and destroyed by the uh, uh, McCarthyistic paranoia of the late 40s and throughout the 50s. Um, and of course, Brando, my God. Uh, On the Waterfront is not only one of the greatest films ever made, but it has... For my money, the single greatest performance by an American actor, Marlon Brando as Terry Malloy, ex prize fighter, and stevedore, guilt-ridden, uh, questioning him. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, so much going on. In the eyes, behind the eyes, um, around him, he 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 seldom, well, I wouldn't say seldom, but often does not make eye contact, as if he's examining everything around him. It's it's natural paranoia. It's it's guilt. It's fear. It's a sense of rightness. A complexity that can only be described as human. He uh, he just seemed to understand. I don't think Brando was a very nice person, but as an actor, he understood humanity. He knew what it was. I mean, even his Stanley Kowalski, which is a pretty unsympathetic part, he invested with a sympathy. I mean, you look at the movie version with him and Vivian Lee, who was not a sympathetic actress. She's playing Blanche, who's supposed to be sympathetic. He's playing Stanley, who's not supposed to be sympathetic. And you wonder sometimes who the villain is. You wonder who you're supposed to sympathize with. It it that that's what makes that movie uh, so fascinating. It 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 transcends even the even the stage play because of the casting I think one of the most effective uh, screen versions of any play it, it is completely cinematic to the credit of Ilya Kazan uh, yeah I mean and that influence continued uh, into the 70s with De Niro and uh, to a lesser degree Pacino and I think Dustin Hoffman Jack Nicholson I never liked overrated as hell always the same uh, it's okay to be always the same if you're James Stewart or Thelma Ritter but you know if you're Jack Nicholson a little of that goes a very long way. One man's cool is another man's obnoxious, and to me he was obnoxious. I liked some of his performances. Uh, I certainly thought About Schmidt was a great performance. Uh, Reds, when he played Eugene O'Neill. 
and uh, Easy Rider and even a thing called the King of Marvin Gardens which most people don't know about but it's one of his most inventive thoughtful performances uh, but basically I still think he's overrated as hell God puts his honor talk about stinking up the screen um, anyway but De Niro, I mean, there's a genius. There's a real fucking genius. Nothing, you know, what would Nicholson ever do to compare with uh, Travis Bickle, you know? Or Don Corleone, the young Don Corleone, who he played in uh, Godfather 2. Or the, uh, the uh, transformed soldier of the deer hunter or Rupert Pupkin and of course uh, Jake LaMotta in Raging Bull uh, if Brando's performance in On the Waterfront is the greatest male performance by an American actor De Niro's Raging Bull is certainly number two. I mean second, not number two, because that implies shit, which it is not. It is not. It is. It, 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 it is certainly not shit. It's spellbinding. It's transformative. It does something to you watching it. It's embarrassingly good. Disturbingly good. It hurts to watch him. But anyway, that's it for now, I guess.